delighted to have you tuned in to our virtual revival. It is our prayer that you will be spiritually enlightened by tonight's message and that the Word of God will draw you closer to His will for your life. For those who are members of the Sugarland Church of Christ and members of the Lord's Church throughout the nation and the world, it is our hope and prayer that you will be encouraged by the message tonight and that your faith will be strengthened in the Lord. Let us go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, at this time, we approach your almighty throne of grace and mercy, Father, thanking you for all that you've blessed us with, particularly the things that we often take for granted, like good health and a sound mind. We thank you too, Father, for this avenue of prayer, knowing that we can bring all our cares and concerns to you and that you will address them according to your holy and divine will. Father, we ask that you forgive us where we have fallen short and bless us with the zeal to continue to study your word so that we may be stronger 
believers going forward, Father. Father, we also pray at this time for those who are currently experiencing any health challenges, Father. We know that you're the great physician and capable of boundless healings, Father. As I pray that you would bless the health care professionals and the caregivers with the wisdom to provide the necessary remedies, Father, for those who are currently challenged that will restore them to a healthy state. Bless each and every one of us, Father, that we may serve as a support for those who are facing health issues. Father, we pray tonight for our guest speaker. Pray that you will bless him with the words that will encourage us to be the people and examples to the world that you would have us to be. We pray that our love for one another will continue to grow, and by that the world can see you in us. Close in Heavenly Father, we honor and praise you for just who you are. Regardless of what we have done or have not done, you have been patient and merciful to us. Thank you for your unconditional love and forgiveness. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. I love to praise him. I found I love to praise him. I love to praise him. I love to praise him. and also Family Care Minister of the Sugarland Church of Christ. I'm before you to introduce our speaker tonight who really needs no introduction among us in the person of Brother Jack Evans Jr. of Terrell, Texas. Jack Evans Jr. is a powerful proclaimer of the Word of God. 
having preached the gospel of Christ for over 41 years, he has proven to be a well-versed and capable evangelist of the Church of Christ. While working at Southwestern Christian College for 33 years, he concurrently served as the minister of the Lake Como Church of Christ in Fort Worth, Texas for 23 years. During Jack's tenure at Southwestern Christian College, he initially served as director of admission and retention. Before assuming his final role of special assistant to the president of the college, it was this role that Jack was most effective. Following in his father's footsteps, he began to travel the country preaching the gospel and saving souls while simultaneously recruit, recruiting students and raising money for the college. Outside of Jack's work with the church, he is an avid outdoorsman and cowboy. He raises horses and cows and often provides stock for the Mesquite Rodeo and Cowboy of Color nationwide rodeos. He also is an architect of an overseas travel in which he coordinates excursions for travels to the Holy Land and many interesting historical sites mentioned in the Bible. Jack is happily married to the former Vicki Romeo and together they have three children and eight grandchildren. He's turning them all into cowboys and cowgirls. Jack is author of eight books, the most recent are Trouble in the Hood, What's Love Got to Do With It? and the God of a Second Chance. Nowadays, being highly sought after to conduct workshops, gospel meetings, and campaigns across the nation and abroad, Jack Jr. is humbly following the footsteps of his earthly father, the late Dr. Jack Evans Sr., and fulfilling, fulfilling the great commission of the Heavenly Father, go into all the world. Jack is passionate about sharing the word of God. So we ask you tonight to uh, listen attentively to the word of God. In fact, put your seatbelts on. You're in for a spiritual journey as we listen to Brother Jack Evans, Jr. Good evening. I want to begin this evening by, first of all, thanking God Almighty for the opportunity and the privilege to share the Word of God with you this evening. And then I want to express my appreciation to this great church, the Sugar Land Church of Christ, uh, the elders and the ministers here. Uh, thank you for inviting me to come and be a part of this series of lessons on Wednesday night during the month of September. I think they are calling it uh, September Revival Series and the theme for this month will be preserving peace uh, in peril. And so I'm very thankful to God for this opportunity and thank you uh, to the bishops of this church, thank you to the deacons and uh, the ministers and especially Wendell Hart who is my contact person. Uh, Wendell was instrumental when I did the first citywide uh, meeting in the uh, city of Houston. And so we've had a long relationship together and I appreciate him for considering me as we begin this series of lessons. I look forward to tag teaming with some other great preachers of God. Uh, you'll hear from Andrew Braxter, you'll hear from Johnny Bradshaw, you'll hear from George Williams and, and Alvin Daniels, and you may even hear from the preacher of this church, uh, Brother Parker, before this series comes to an end. The theme for this month is preserving peace in peril and we are living in some very perilous times. Uh, we're living in days that I never imagined in my life. Uh, I never thought I would live to see a day like 9-11 come. I never thought I would see a pandemic uh, which we are uh, enduring right now. We're living in some very difficult times, some very perilous times. And I wanna share with you tonight uh, what is helping me to make it through these times I'm going to preach from my convictions and I'm going to share with you my faith. Uh, today I'm speaking to you with mixed emotions. I'm full of emotion because uh, it is this month I will 
reached 60 years old. Uh, I never thought I'd live to be 60 years old. Uh, it is this month that I will mark 42 years of preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm doing these things now with my parents gone. Many of you that know me know that I lost my parents last year, 2019, uh, both of them about seven months apart. And so every time I speak, I cannot speak without thinking about them. Uh, they were both instrumental in me becoming a minister and becoming a man of faith. I want to call your attention to a very familiar passage of scripture uh, this evening. It's in John chapter 20. And uh, the verses that we'll need to camp out on tonight are verse 29 through 31. But just for clarity and so that you can re-familiarize yourself with this text, I want to start at verse number 19 and then conclude at verse 31. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sins you remit, they are remitted unto them, and whosoever sins you retain, they are retained. Verse 24, but Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, we have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. After eight days, again, his disciples were within and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut and stood in the midst and said, peace be unto you. Then saith he to Thomas, reach hither thy finger and behold my hands and reach hither thy hand and thrust it into my side and be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, my Lord and my God. Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through his name. I share this text tonight because we are living in some very perilous times, some very uncertain times. Even right now, as we endure this pandemic, we are having to do so many things that we are not accustomed to and they are uncomfortable and inconvenient. We're having to distance ourselves from one another. We're having to wear masks so that we don't uh, transmit a disease or pick up the disease. We're having to uh, lock down and stay in our homes. We're doing things that we've never had to do before, and it's a difficult time in our world right now. We're living in a world where people are wondering what is going to happen tomorrow. But I came tonight to tell you that for the child of God, there is nothing too big or too bad that God can't handle. And even though we're enduring this pandemic and this thing called Corona, uh, uh, COVID-19, all of that, the child of God still is at peace because he or she knows that God is still in control and he's still in charge. I brought this message as we begin this series of lessons on Wednesday night because there's somebody at home who's been going through some of the things I've been going through. And I want to assure you tonight that you can make it if you will put your trust, your faith, your hope, everything you've got, if you'll put it into Almighty God. 
right now as I stand before you. I stand before you with a broken heart. I'm still grieving over the loss of my mother and the loss of my father. I'm still grieving over the fact that I'm not going to see them anymore on this side of the grave. And then not only that, I'm having to deal with this pandemic just like you are, and I'm having to deal with finances just like you are, and I'm, I'm worried and concerned about my health going forward. There's somebody at home just like me dealing with all these issues, but I came to tell you tonight that if you will put your faith in the faith, then you don't have to worry about what's going to happen tomorrow, and you can live just like Timothy lived when Paul said to him in 2 Timothy 1, 7, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and a sound mind. And so for the next few minutes, I just want to talk about faith in the faith. It makes you look at things differently. God has made provisions for the believer, and we don't have to be fearful like those who are out in the world that don't know God. We don't have to know what's going to happen tomorrow. We don't even know what's going to happen tomorrow, but we know who holds tomorrow, and because we have a relationship with him, he's adopted us as sons and daughters, we do not have to fear going forward in life. I chose this text, John 20, 29, through 31 because it proves to us that Jesus has the power to meet any and every need we might have. What happened in this text is the Lord has gone to Calvary. He's been crucified on the cross. They buried him in a borrowed tomb. His disciples met in an upper room after his crucifixion and burial. They're there discussing what's just happened. They're fearful for their lives because they're Jews and they don't know what's going to happen to them as well. And while they're in this room, nobody opened the door, nobody unlocked the door. The Lord just appeared in the room. And the text says, John says, when they saw Jesus, they were excited, they were happy because they knew he was now resurrected from the grave. But John also says there was somebody missing that day. Thomas, one of the disciples, was not there. And I don't know what was so important that he would miss this important meeting with the Lord, but he was not there. And so they found him on the street and they said to him, man, you missed it. We have seen the Lord. And Thomas says to them, I don't believe it and I'm not going to believe it unless I see him for myself. I used to give Thomas the blues, and many of us did, and we called him Doubting Thomas and all of that. And then I had to think about it one day. Thomas was around when the Lord walked on water. He was around when he fed thousands with a little boy's lunch. He was around when he healed the blind and made the lame to walk. He saw that with his own eyes, and so I understand why he would say, I'm not going to believe unless I see him for myself. So John records, eight days later, the disciples are assembled in a room together, the same upper room, doors locked, and the Lord does the same thing again. He just appears in the room, and he walks immediately to Thomas, and he says to Thomas, I understand you're not going to believe unless you see me, so here I am. He said, now handle me, behold me, put your hands in the nail prints, and feel the hole in my side, and when Thomas heard the Lord speak and he saw what he saw. He said, my Lord and my God. And it's at that moment that Jesus pronounced a blessing, not only for Thomas and the disciples, but for all would-be believers that would come after him. He said, Thomas, you believe because you see me, but blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. And then listen to what John says again. And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through his name. Church, this is what helps me make it through this pandemic. This is what helps me in these perilous times. I have put my faith in the faith. Now, I'm talking about two different faiths here. My faith, your faith, is what you and I do. The faith is what God has already done. 
And so God wants us to put everything we have, he wants us to trust in him. No matter what happens in the world and in our lives, he wants us to trust him and believe that he's got everything under control and he's still in charge. Put our faith in the faith. And I'm going to believe that in this day and age, there's some other things that are coming. We don't know what's down the road, but we do know that God is able to meet any and every need you and I might have. I often tell people the O in God's name stands for the number of things that ought to bless your life. He is omniscient. He is omnipotent. He is omnipresent. He is omni-audio. He's omni-video. What does all that mean? That means God is all-knowing. He knows everything. He, he, he's in every place, omnipresent. He's omnipotent. He has all power in his hands. He's omni-audio. He hears everything. He's omni-video. He sees everything. Nothing gets past our God. And that's why you and I must be willing to put our faith in the faith. And that is the faith of Jesus Christ. That, is, that term is used, that phrase is used several times in the Bible. You'll remember over in Jude 3 where it says contending for the faith. Or you remember when John said in Revelation, what is that, uh, 14, 12, he says, Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ. And then he goes on to say, Blessed are the dead that die in the Lord. We are ask and commanded by God to put our faith in the faith. He wants us to act on what he has already done to secure our salvation and to, and, and to make provisions for us as we go forward. During this time of year, and it's a difficult thing right now, but during this time of year, I'm usually getting ready to travel internationally or I've already traveled internationally. We had a trip scheduled for Israel. Uh, we had a trip scheduled for South Africa. We had a trip scheduled for Greece, but because of COVID-19, we've been shut down. Nobody gets to travel anywhere. One of my favorite places is going to Israel, to the land where Jesus walked and did what he did. And those things are recorded in the Bible. I use that trip to help those, those who would travel with me to understand the significance of the text. One of the things we've got to learn is that God has addressed everything that we might endure in this book. He communicates with us through this book called the Bible. And so there's nothing that we can encounter that he's not able to handle. And he has proven in this book that there's nothing too big, too bad that he can't handle it. And so a lot of times when we travel, and I'll preach on the sites or I'll take, uh, get some of the preachers who are with me to preach on the sites and show the relevance of the text there in the New Testament and the site that we're standing on. We travel out on the Sea of Galilee. Sea of Galilee is a beautiful body of water. It's 12 miles long. It's about eight miles wide. It's an inland body of water. It's got different names. And I'm going to do this real quick. Uh, the thing that is so mesmerizing about this place is that it was out on that body of water where the Lord made nature behave. You'll remember in Mark chapter, I believe it's Mark chapter 4, verse number 39, 35, Mark 4, 35, where Jesus told his disciples, let us pass over to the other side. So they're leaving the side they live on, they're passing over to what is called the dark side. The Jews didn't go over there. There were heathens over there. There were Gentiles over there. They didn't go over there. But the Lord said, let's pass over to the other side. And so while en route to passing over to the other side, and he has an agenda. When he gets there, there's a man running around out of his mind, crazy. Uh, the Lord is going to run the devil out of that man. But while going over, he has another agenda. His disciples on the boat, who are his, his, his men, they are, they are getting beside themselves. And so the Lord says, I'm going to give them a faith workshop on the way over. And so while they are sailing across the sea, a storm begins to rage. There's thunder and lightning, rain, wind, water, all the things associated with a storm. They are fearful for their lives. And, and, and they've tried everything. These men are not just land lovers. These men are fishermen by occupation. They've been out on the sea before, but now this storm looks like it's about to take their lives. And they, they, they cry out and they, they, they go find the Lord and say, Master, don't you care that we're perishing? And when the Lord gets up from his nap, 
he speaks three words, peace, be still. You're talking about peace in the midst of perils. They had a peril. They were fearful for their lives and they called on the Lord and the Lord showed them he had the power to bring, bring order out of chaos. He said, peace, just with his voice, peace, be still. And everything became calm. The thunder stopped booming. The lightning stopped flashing. The rain stopped falling. Waves stopped jumping in the ship. The ship became calm. The sea became calm. The wind became calm. All because the Lord spoke and they obeyed his voice. And when I, when I read something like that, I can't help but identify with this text because there have been times in my life it was been, it's been storming, there's been thunder and lightning and rain and wind and water and thinking, I'm thinking this is about to take me on out. But when I call on the Lord, he has already proven he can control the storm. He can control nature. And I'm going to ask you tonight, if he can control thunder and lightning and rain and wind and water, what is it you got that you think he cannot handle? You need him while we're in these perilous times. You ought to get as close as you can possibly to almighty God and call on him. Even though COVID is running rampant, they don't have a vaccine. Call on Jesus. Even though we're dealing with the, the wake of 9-11 and we don't do like we used to do, call on Jesus. Even though you may have lost your job or you may not, not know how you're going to take care of your family, you're, you're not bringing in any money, your health is going back. Whatever it is, call on him. He's able. He's able to come into your life and he can say peace. In the midst of your peril, he can say peace and he can bring a peace like you can't even explain to anybody that's in the world. That's the kind of Lord we have. And that's why I'm here to tell you tonight, put your faith in the faith. We left that sea, we went over into the land where the Lord was headed. It's a place called Gadara. There's a man running around up there out of his mind. He's naked. He's got a wild look in his eyes, wild matted hair. He lives where dead people are buried. He lives where wild animals live. He, he can't live around uh, 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 civilization or people. He lives a solitary life by himself. And the Lord is on his way to heal him. When they get close, the man who's been cutting himself with rocks and crying out and screaming and carrying on. They know him as a crazy man. He drops his rocks, runs to where the Lord is, falls down prostrate before him. He says, he says, he says, he says, what have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? I adjure thee that thou torment me not. Mark chapter 5. And the Lord begins to go to work on this problem. What's your name? My name is Legion. For we are many. The Lord says, come out of that man. Thou unclean spirit. And immediately the devil which had taken over in this man's life came out because the Lord spoke to that satanic force. He'll do the same thing for you tonight. Because I know when trouble comes, you start looking for answers. People turn to alcohol, they turn to drugs, they turn to gambling, they're trying to play the lottery and win a bunch of money. All kinds of things will come up in your life, and I'm here to tell you the Lord can help you with these satanic forces, but you've got to put your faith in the faith. We went to a place called Tabga. Tabga messed me up because Tabga is a place... And I got to do this real quick, but Tabga is a place, and it's, it's spelled T-A-B-G-H-A if you want to Google it at home. It's a place where the Lord took little or nothing and turned it into something. They got up there and 5,000 people had followed him, 5,000 men, their wives and their children had followed him up there and, and, and they were, uh, it was getting late in the evening. His disciples said, Master, uh, we need to send these folk away. We're going to have a riot up here and I'm paraphrasing now, but we don't have anything to feed these folk. Let them go find food in the, in the villages and the cities. He said, they need not go away. He said, tell them to sit down in companies of 50. They sat down in companies of 50. And the Lord says, is there anything to work with here? And, and evidently they've been looking around and they came and said, well, Lord, we found uh, a little boy that has a lunch, two fish and five loaves. But what is that among so many? The Lord took the two fish and the five loaves 
put his hands on him, looked toward heaven and started blessing and breaking and blessing and breaking. And he broke so much that the people ate till they were full and food was left over. I'm here to tell you, he can take little or nothing and do something with it if you will entrust him with it. We serve a God who's able. There's nothing he can do but fail. He cannot fail, but he is a God that can meet us where we are. The Lord took those two fish, five loaves, opened a buffet out on the mountainside, and people ate till they were full. They gathered up the fragments, 12 baskets of food left over. My question is, if the Lord can control thunder and lightning and rain and wind and water, if he can take little or nothing and turn it into something, what is it going on in your life? Put your faith in the faith. So many other places I could take you, but I don't have the time tonight. We went to Caesarea Philippi where, where the Lord told us what his purpose was. When we went there, you know what Mar uh, Matthew says, uh, he, when he came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he said to his disciples, who the men say that I the son of man am, and some say thou art uh, Elijah, some say Jeremiah, John the Baptist, one of the prophets. He said, all right, who do you say I am? And you remember, Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. After this, the Lord says to him, upon this rock, I will build my church. We find what the Lord has come for. And it's a wonderful thing to know that there's a place where we can connect with the Lord. When you are baptized into Christ, he adds you to that body, to that church, to his bride, to his kingdom. And when you are connected to Jesus, you don't worry about things that are going to come up because you have now put your faith in the faith. Well, what else? If you look at Mark 16, 16, the Lord said over there, he that believeth in this baptized shall be saved. He's letting us know the only way you can become a member or a part of me is you must be baptized. Well, that baptism, we heard about it in Acts chapter 2. Acts 2, the, the apostles began to preach on the day of Pentecost. 3,000 obeyed the preaching of the apostles. They were baptized in water on that day and added to the apostles, which made up the church of Christ, the body of Christ, the household of faith, the kingdom, the bride. Now we have the body. The head is Jesus. The body are the members who would be believers who have put their faith in the faith. And Luke says in verse 47, he says over there, he says, and, and having faith with all the people, the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. So we know that if we want to be saved, we have to be in the church. And if we get in the church, the only way we can get into the church is be baptized into Christ. And when we're baptized into Christ, he adds us to the body. Now we're in a position of being saved when this world comes to an end. And this is what I would have you know. If the Lord has secured your salvation, he has also made provisions for you to make it from this point all the way to the end. And so no matter what comes up, Ebola, COVID, H1N1, whatever comes up, don't worry because God's got something better waiting on the other side. And we, all we need to do is put our faith in the faith. And then I would have you know, one of the things that really holds me together, not only, not only do I love the word of God, and you know, Jesus taught us uh, over there in Matthew 4 to love the word. He told the devil, it is written, it is written, it is written. So he, he wants us to be people of the book. Not only did he give us an invitation, Matthew 11 and verse number 28, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Not only does he have a place for us to claim our salvation in him and a part of his body, Matthew the 16th chapter, He's given us directions to get in. The thing that holds me is the fact that he said, I'm coming back. I, 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 couldn't, I, couldn't, I couldn't preach this unpopular gospel if he wasn't coming back. I'd be afraid of what's going to happen tomorrow. I'd be afraid to, 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 to leave and not know if I'm going to make it back home if I didn't have the blessed assurance 
that the Lord who left here after his death, burial, and resurrection and went back to glory, that same Jesus said, I'm coming back. John 14, 1. Let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I'd go there to prepare a place for you. And if I go, surely I'll come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. He's coming back. He's coming back. Acts chapter 1, after he boarded the clouds and went on up into glory, we see two men in white apparel who are in the audience and they say, "Ye men of Galilee, why stand you here gazing up into the heavens? That same Jesus you see going up, he's coming back again. He's coming back. He's coming back. And then John said, as he closed out the Bible in Revelation, I think that's 22, 7, he says, he says, he says, behold, I come quickly. He's quoting Jesus. And he says, blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. And I, John, saw these things. And when I'd heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel, which showed me these things. Then said the unto me, see thou do it not, for I'm thy fellow servant, thy brethren. Uh, we both worship God. Then say the unto me, see not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. Watch this church he said he that is unjust let him be unjust still he that is filthy let him be filthy still he that is righteous let him be righteous still he that is holy let him be holy still then john quotes jesus again verse number uh, verse number 12 he says behold i come quickly my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be i'm alpha and omega the beginning and the end the first and the last and then verse 20 he said surely i come quickly lord what are you saying i'm coming back I'm coming back. And so what you and I must do is put our faith in the faith and hold on to God's unchanging hand. And there's going to come a day when the Lord is coming back for those who have put their trust in him. And I would have you know tonight, I, I, I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not a simple preacher, but I try to make my preaching as simple and as practical and as as relevant and significant as I possibly can. I know these are tough times we're dealing with. I know you're worried about how you're going to make ends meet. I know you're, you're grieving over the loss of loved ones. And some have even lost loved ones to COVID, to Corona. I know you're concerned about your own health. I know you're concerned about who's in the White House and, and our government leaders, but I'm here to tell you the only way you can make it from one day to the next is putting your faith in the faith and trusting that God's got everything under control. I'm here to tell you, he's an awesome God. He's an awesome God. And when you look in the Bible, you got to love this book now. When you look in the Bible, when you read different things you find in this book, God is just showing you there ain't nothing I can't deal with. Every time you look at something in his book, you're seeing God who has inspired this book. And then we have written here the evidence of eyewitnesses. They saw it. They saw him walk on water. They saw him take fish and bread and feed thousands on a mountainside. They saw him raise Lazarus from the dead. They saw him raise Jairus' daughter. They saw him give back sight to the blind. They saw him make the lame to walk. They saw him make the deaf to hear. They saw him, they saw him, and saw him. And they wrote it down. And so when you and I come along and we say, well, I got an issue here. I need to know if God can handle this. There's nothing too big, too bad that he can't handle. And I'm here to tell you tonight that if you want to live a fearless life, if you want to live a life where you don't have to worry about how you're going to make it, then you need to put your faith in the faith. That's how you preserve peace in perilous times. If I didn't have the Lord on my side, there's no way I could make it. No other way in the world. No way. I'm still grieving over the loss of my parents. I'm still concerned about how I'm going to take care of my wife and my family. I'm still concerned about what's going to happen tomorrow, but I don't worry about it. I don't live in fear. I know my God is able. 
And I'm talking to somebody tonight, prayerfully, who's in the church, and you just needed a little reminding of how awesome our God is. But I'm also talking to somebody tonight via Facebook Live who may not even know the Lord. And you, you, you've been struggling and straining and wrestling and trying everything under the sun. And I'm commending to you tonight that you try Almighty God. If you want to be saved, if you want power for the moment, power for this evening, power for the next day and the next and every day in the future, you need to tonight say, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. And if you believe that, believe he died on an old rugged cross, buried in a borrowed tomb, resurrected the third day, went on back to glory. If you believe what I've been talking about tonight, be willing tonight to repent of your sins, turn away from sin, and then confess, I believe Jesus is the Son of God. I want him as the Lord of my life. And then be willing, according to the scripture, to put him on in water baptism. Matthew 28, you must be baptized. Mark 16, you must be baptized. Acts 2.38, you must be baptized. Colossians 2, you're buried with him in baptism. Romans chapter 6, buried with him in baptism. 1 Peter 3.21, the light figure baptism doth also now save us. Now you can have the Lord if you'll follow the plan that he left for man. You say, well, where did I go, preacher? Where did I go? You can start with the Sugar Land Church of Christ. They're hosting this revival meeting. It's a revival to strengthen their members, but it's also a revival to teach the lost what they need to do to be saved. Call them. They've got great elders there. They've got a great preacher there, great members there, and they'd be willing to come, that they'd be willing to have you come, and they'll take your confession baptize you in water. You say, well, there's all this COVID going on. They'll find a way to do it because your soul is the most important thing. And so I'm prayerful tonight that if you're not a member of the body of Christ, the one you find in the Bible, I'm praying tonight that you'll, you'll make Jesus your choice, that you'll let God into your life, repent of your sins, confess his name, be baptized in water, become a member of the body of Christ, and live faithful unto death. And I guarantee your days ahead will be better than the days in your past. You'll have somebody to hold on, to call on, and he's always available. I'm praying for you tonight. And if you're a member of the body of Christ and you've been walking disorderly, you know you're out of step with God, you know you're out of harmony with him, you need to confess. Repent of that sin tonight. Denounce it and say, Lord, I'm sorry. He will forgive and forget. That's the kind of God we serve. Or if you just need the prayers of the righteous, call up to the Sugar Land Church. Ask those elders there to pray with you and pray for you. And they'll do that. I know those men, they're good men there. And I'm praying that you will be moved and changed by this message tonight. And not only tonight, but everyone you hear this week, uh, this month in September. I'm praying for you, even right now. God bless you. Would you be free from the burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you or evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood, and there is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood. And there is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. And would you be free from your passion and pride? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Come for a cleansing to Calvary's tide. There's wonderful power in the blood, yeah. And there is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. And there is power, power, wonder-working power.
power and the precious blood of the Lamb. Wow. We thank you for that uh, message, uh, Brother Evans, and we, we hope, trust, and pray that everybody uh, got a chance to tune in. And we just, what a powerful message, powerful message. Uh, and so we're just glad to uh, put on this revival. Um, if there's anybody visiting with us, just wanted to re reiterate uh, the invitational call. Um, if, if, if you're here, you're visiting, you want to be baptized, you come by hearing the message of salvation, the facts that Jesus died, he was buried, he rose again on the third day, believing that, repenting your sins, confessing, being buried in a watery grave of baptism. If you want to be baptized, just give us a call, 281-561-0881, or um, via email, info at slcoc.org, Lewis Parker at slcoc.org, that's myself, and um, we'll meet you at the church building and baptize you. If you're listening from afar, a different state, a different city, a different country, feel free to give us an email or a call, and we'll help locate a congregation that's nearest you. Again, we thank Brother Evans for a job well done. If you have any prayer requests, you could just um, uh, fill it in right now uh, on the Facebook live feed, and, and we'll get it on over to um, uh, everybody, uh, the ministers and elders, to pray. Uh, also, you can visit our website at slclc.org, and once you submit a prayer request through there, it automatically goes to the ministers and elders, um, and so we'll we'll pray for you. So thank you again. Don't forget to tune in next week. We have another powerful uh, message by Brother George Williams. Thank you very much. We want to thank you for tuning in uh, to hear Jack Evans Jr. tonight, who did an outstanding job. Uh, please join me for prayer. Our Father, our God, we thank you so much for this tremendous opportunity to share the word. Father, we thank you for sending uh, Brother Jack Evans Jr. to make a positive impact on our services. Father, we pray that his message will impact all of us, that we will continue to grow in faith and knowledge of that word. Father, we ask that you continue to be with Sugar Land and all of our guests, that this gospel uh, journey will be a great one. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. You.